podcasting is changing, or is it? We dig deep on the matter with Ken Ray. This is Mac Voices. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Mac Voices Magazine, our free Flipboard magazine that brings you the best Apple tech tips on the web. High in signal, low in noise, just like Mac Voices, Mac Voices Magazine will help you do more with any and all of your Apple devices. Access Mac Voices Magazine content in the free Flipboard app, on the web, and now in your favorite RSS reader. Find out more at macvoices.com slash magazine. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, I've got a special guest tonight about a special topic. It is going to be a little bit inside baseball, but I think it's important that maybe you hear from both of us about it simply because it may or may not affect you affect you and how you subscribe, consume, follow, <laughs> listen to our respective shows. Mr. Ken Ray is with us uh, to talk podcasting. Ken, welcome. It's good to have you. Thanks for having me, Chuck. I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate it. You and I had some discussions after the uh, the last Mac Voices live session, and I think we're feeling a bit, both feeling a bit, not confused. Well, maybe confused is a good word, but the the times they are a changing. It, it seems, um, mm-hmm. thanks to Apple's announcement of a subscription podcast service, and so let's start with that and what you think about it, how you feel, and what you know about it so far. Oh, I know almost nothing about it. Except for, you know, what we've read. Uh, So Apple is making it possible for podcasters to uh, set up a subscription service. And you can charge something I read said as little as 49 cents or 59 cents a month, which I haven't seen that anyplace else. But I found it kind of interesting that you could even do like nickel and dime stuff. But basically, you can make it so that your podcast offered through Apple Podcasts Uh, people can subscribe to it and pay you money. Uh, This is the reason that Apple, (laughs) I think it was like a month, month and a half ago, they were like, yeah, we're not going to call it uh, subscribing to podcasts anymore. We're going to call it following. It's like, okay, yeah, because it's only been 16 years that people have been subscribing to podcasts. Let's take a month and really quickly change that. Um, I don't, I mean, that, I mean, that, that's the very, very, very basic of it. I know there are things that are bothering people like, that means your stuff is going to be behind the paywall. Well, of course it does. That means it's not going to be open RSS. Well, of course it's not. I mean, there are a number of things that, you know, that seem to be bothering people as far as the mechanics of it. Um, None of it, though, means that anything is cut off from any place else. So I don't know if you had particular questions or particular, not like I'm the, you know, the person to give all of the answers, but I know that I think we were in a Slack chat that somebody uh, was saying, well, here's a thing, and it's like 11 things you didn't know about Apple Podcasts. And I'm reading it and like, well, that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. I don't know if I'm supposed to be incensed or if I'm just supposed to be like, oh, okay, I didn't know that, and now I do, and you know, we can go ahead and move on. Yeah, um, okay, so I, the, to respond to that first, I definitely want to come back to the 49 cent thing because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm with you. I think that's very interesting. Um, the things I'm seeing people incensed over don't really bother me as much as confuse me. Okay. Uh, because like you said, if if I'm going to be in the Apple subscription service, mm-hmm. it does not appear to preclude me from offering that very same content somewhere else through an RSS feed for free. Right. Yes. I, that Yes. Nothing says that it is exclusive to Apple. Obviously, if you are going to try to get paid, and if Apple is going to try to take their 30% for the first year and 15% for each additional year of an active subscription, uh, Apple's going to want to make sure that there's a way to keep track of that, right? They're not going to ask me how many people subscribed to you this month. And I'll be like, oh, only five. I'm sorry. You know, I mean, they're going to need some way to check that. At the same time, they are not saying this content is exclusive to us. So there are things like, I was talking to Adam Christensen about this earlier this week. What if I want to go on Spotify? Well, go on Spotify. I mean, nothing from Apple says that you cannot make the content free other places. Nothing in Apple's thing says that you can't have ads even behind the paywall. And nothing says that you can't offer it anyplace else. The thing you have to worry about is, does Spotify say you can't offer it anyplace else? We haven't seen, as far as I know, 
We haven't seen their terms of service yet. I'm a little bit bummed that I have not actually been able to get behind the paywall on the Apple thing. I wanted to go in and check it out. And the first thing it wants to know is, what's the name of your show? And I didn't want to do anything that was going to mess up Mac OS Ken, so I didn't put that. So I basically didn't put anything because it sort of felt like, it almost felt like I was um, uh, signaling intent to want to go in and find out more. So unfortunately, I have not been into their system on it. I've just been reading stuff from the outside. And I too, I, I tried to log into it and it's, as we record this, it's setting up my page, I think is the, the phrase that it uses. Okay. So I'm not completely clear because I, I, I don't think that I had an Apple Podcast Connect identity before this. So I've had to con- create one. Now, Wait, if, you, if your show's on iTunes, I think you had to. Well, maybe I did, but it wouldn't let me in with any pa- password that I have stored in one password, and I could not find any any documentation anywhere. So oh. I may have some some service aspects, but that's interesting to hear hear you say because you apparently were able to get in past that point, and you're still well, not quite sure. Well, no, I did. I I didn't get past the part where it said, "What's the name of your show?" Because again, I didn't want to mess anything up. I have an iTunes Connect. ID or whatever. Um, but then when I tried to go in to find out more, what it wanted to know was what's the name of the show that you're... I assumed it was what's the name of your show that you're starting or that you're moving over, neither of which I wanted to do. So I decided, okay, I'm going to hold back for you know a few days because they only announced it, what, a week ago tomorrow as we're speaking right now. So there hasn't been a tremendous amount of time to really dive into it yet. And that's something we should make clear on that by the time this gets out... We may all know more. I mean, especially about the Spotify thing, because the the Spotify thing allegedly is going to be. Uh, we're going to have more details later this week, mm-hmm. um, allegedly. And I'm like you. What are the terms of service? What are the implications behind this? Is it just going to be a way for me to stick my RSS feed on there, um, or, I mean, how's it? How it? It would seem like it has to be behind a quote unquote paywall there right. too, in order to keep track of it. So right. how's that going to work? I can't imagine that it's going to be just putting your RSS feed on there because I assume, I mean, your show's already on Spotify, isn't it? Or is it not? You can put shows on Spotify now because mine are. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, I mean, it's going to have to be, because that's the thing, they're going to want to keep track of like how much money they're owed or how much money they owe you. In Spotify's case, it's going to be how much money they owe you because they're not taking a commission. They're paying out 100% of whatever it is to the uh, podcaster. Um, But they're still going to need to know how much that's going to be. So it's going to be proprietary for them as well, I would think. I mean, now the other side of that, I mean, what's kind of cool is, I don't even know how much I pay Libsyn every month for all the different shows I do. Apple is charging $19.99 a year, I believe it is. And that gives you the tools to make your page. And uh, it does give you the hosting. And if it sounds like I am all excited about this, I'm not like nothing I do currently. Am I going to take over there? Because everything I do currently is free of charge to the listener. And I don't have any intention to change any of that stuff. I The thing that I was, when you and I were talking about this last week, the thing that I'm most excited about is that they are finally giving the tools to podcasters that they gave to, you know, uh, app developers 13 years ago, that they gave to book publishers 13 or, or 14 or however many years ago that they opened the iBookstore, uh, that they gave to musicians, geez, back in 2003, I guess, is when the iTunes store opened. I'm sorry, the iTunes... Yeah, the iTunes store and then the iTunes music store. There have been all these ways that that people could create with Apple, post to Apple, and then monetize through Apple that I was complaining on an episode of um, Mac Break Weekly 10 years ago that this was not something that was open to podcasters. And it was fine because at the time, my friend August Trometer had rolled away for me to charge through uh, PayPal for uh, a monetization thing I was doing at the time. Uh, Patreon came on and made that easier. There have been plenty of other things that have made that happen, but it was always frustrating to me that, you know, the thing that, oh, that app is only 99 cents. I'll just click there and do that, right? I mean, they made that seamless. They made buying a song, buying an app, 
buying a movie, buying a book, buying a whole TV series that made all of that seamless and then did nothing for this side of things, nothing for the podcast side, that is. And so the thing that I'm most excited about is that barrier has been removed. Um, what I told Adam this week on In a Few Minutes is I you know, wish that it happened 10 years ago. I wish it had happened three years ago. Uh, I'm glad it's happening now. Um, I don't know if it's going to be anything I'm going to take advantage of, but I like the fact that the tools are now there for podcasters um, in sort of the same easy way from Apple that they've been there you know, for everything else. One of the questions I have is, and this is going to set, may sound strange to some listeners, but can I have two Mac Voices feeds? Can I have one that is behind the paywall? Mm -hmm. Can I have one that is outside the paywall that are exactly the same, that offer exactly the same content with the, uh, with the idea that if you want to support me, then by all means, please go grab the one that's behind the paywall because you will be supporting me. If you don't want to support me or can't support me, at least in a, in a monetary way, then go grab the free feed. I don't Be because I see, I see why not. I, <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I don't. I, I don't either. But I, I kind of see it similar to something we're both doing right now, and that's a Patreon campaign. That if you want to support me, click here, click this button, and you can contribute. And right. So that's that's the way I'm viewing the, the the I guess the two areas. I don't know if that's going to be allowed. It's hard to imagine why it wouldn't be. I think because when I heard somebody. What was it? I can't remember because I've read several articles about this over the past week or so. Uh, what I saw somebody say was, you're really not required to do anything different. The only problem is whatever you say you're going to do, you need to do. Because Apple, like Apple, for example, I think it was on that list of 11 things that you and I were talking about. Uh, Apple is not requiring that anything behind the paywall be ad-free. However, if you say it is ad-free... Then you start running ads, then you might have to answer to Apple at some point. Um, I don't see any reason that that wouldn't be the case, but, you know, Apple's Apple. And there may be something in the, in the fine print that says, well, actually, that is the case. The fact that they are saying that, I mean, the fact that they're not saying that anything that you put on their paid service has to be exclusive would indicate to me that you could actually run the same show either way. It's just a question of, are you, you know, offering support or not? I could hear a listener maybe saying, well, why would you do that? And the answer is because it's harder to get people to go to Patreon because you don't necessarily know Patreon. You don't necessarily trust Patreon. You do trust Apple. Most people listening to our shows in particular do trust Apple more than they might trust a third party. Apple's already got your information and it's as easy as pushing a button. You know you're not giving anything more to anybody else as far as information or exposure of your credit card information and all that stuff. So I would think that Apple would make that possible. Um, I could sort of see why they wouldn't want to because they lose their exclusivity thing. But if they get the 30% of the, you know, $10 that we each make, you know, then, then it's paid for itself, I suppose, as far as they're concerned. Wow, you make 10 bucks. Congratulations. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm pretty it's, proud. You will too yeah. one day, Chuck. You will too. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I have something to aspire to now. No doubt. Um, you know, we laugh about that, but I mean, let's face it, it, it does take, and, and by the way, I, you mentioned Libsyn. Um, I use Libsyn as well. Libsyn has mm -hmm. been phenomenal to me. Mm -hmm. I have, I have no, I have zero complaints about it, but yeah. you're the first, you're the first person I've heard bring up the hosting thing because that is one of the biggest kind of challenges that a podcaster has, uh, a new podcaster. Mm -hmm. You have to find a place to host this stuff. Right. Um, it's not just a matter of slapping up a, a website or publishing an RSS feed. It, that file has to live somewhere that it can be streamed out or mm -hmm. downloaded. Yeah. And so the idea that Apple is giving you that for 19, was it 1995 a year? Yeah. As, that's, you know, plus 15%, well, what is it, 30% the first year, 20% after that. Uh, 15 after that, yeah. 15 after that. That's not bad as far as a hosting fee goes, depending on how much content you're producing. Uh, it makes it, I mean, it it really lowers the barrier of entry. I mean, you know, I, I 
personally have been doing this long enough and it has been my business long enough that I don't think about the fact that every time I start a new podcast, it's going to cost me $20 a month because I go for the high end on the lips and stuff because I tend to do, you know, daily shows instead of weekly shows. And so it's, it costs me a bit more. Um, I mean, you can get in for 20 bucks. You can get in for 20 bucks with Apple and it'll be another year before, you know, you have to pay that 20 bucks again. Now, granted, there's all the other stuff. There's, you know, the computer, there's the microphone, there's the editing software, there's whatever it takes to make your podcast. But as far as the hosting and getting out there, uh, you can get in for 20 bucks and you don't then have to start it. Well, I mean, you do still have to start it and wonder, is this ever going to pay anything? But as far as your outlay, Eh, I don't know. It's it. There, there are so many different things, though. It, it's what's weird to me about this. I jokingly what well, wasn't really a joke, though. When you were on in a few minutes last week, I said, I don't even know what a podcast is anymore. This is not exactly podcasting. This is you have a show you want to produce and you want to put it out there and you want people to be able to pay for it or you want to get paid for it. I mean, and that feels different than podcast because a podcast is an RSS reader that you can go to Downcast, Overcast, Wondercast, Sidecast, Castcast, Castfly, Cash, whatever, blah, blah. You can go to anything, right, and download it as long as either they've scraped the iTunes RSS feeds or you've submitted it to them. This is a different thing. But, you know, Apple claimed the name podcast forever ago. And so they're going to say, well, these are podcasts. Kind of. They're, you know, paid shows, I guess, which is a bit of an angels on the head of a pen argument. But I know lots of people, you know, will make it. I know lots of people are upset by the whole idea that it's not a podcast if it's behind a paywall. And, I, you know, you're, you're probably right. <laughs> it's not exactly, <laughs> but it's, you know, it, it's what we're calling it anyway. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, it is a bit of a sem- of semantics, but I, I kind of know what you mean. Um, but you know, there were audio podcasts, and, which is seems to be the the default definition of podcast. It's an audio show, mm-hmm. but I distribute this uh, Mac Voices through an, an RSS feed. If you wish to subscribe to the video version, or you can just go to YouTube or Vimeo and mm-hmm. look. So. You know, there are a lot of different things here, and some folks I know early on, I don't know if anybody still does it, but it is not impossible to um, put uh, text documents in an RSS feed and have those automatically downloaded. Um, I don't, I don't know if any of the current crop of, of of podcast software does that, but I know at one time that was possible. And people, there were some people that were publishing like novels, or you know, you could subscribe to. What we would now think of as an RSS feed from a blog, doing that. So it's that's it's a, been a oh. that's a fascinating idea. I don't know. I don't know that Apple's next thing is going to do that. But you could publish a newsletter, <laughs> yeah, and have people subscribe to it that way. And again, yes, because Apple already pays because you people already trust Apple. It's just you know like one click. Although I don't know, I can't imagine the podcast player would actually. No, there's no way. No, actually, you can't do that because you can't upload an MP3. You can only upload a, well, something I read said you can only upload a wave or a flack. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Which which is really an interesting choice of um, of the two formats, I guess, for compression purposes. But flack you usually think of as being a whole lot larger, uh, a larger file than than an MP3. Yeah, it's kind of weird actually that they're moving off the MP3 thing. But to me. Anyway, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. I mean, there's so many aspects to this. Um, one one point that was made in that article, there were a couple really good points. Um, one is that this is going to only be available. Now, for you and me, it doesn't make much difference because we have Apple audiences. Mm-hmm. But it's not going to be available anywhere except through the, the um, I guess, the podcast app. And that mm-hmm. means probably on the Mac and on iOS devices, and that's going to be it. No Android. Well, until they make an Android app, right? I mean, Apple Music wasn't available either. It's hard to imagine if this really starts making money, because let's say, let me back up. I think a lot of us thought what was going to happen when we started hearing about an Apple subscription service was that Apple would go out and hire a bunch of people and they would have shows that you couldn't get anyplace else. It's possible that Apple will still 
trying to make that kind of deal, or it's possible that other people will say, I'm going Apple only for this, right? I'm going Apple podcast only for this. Pardon me. I don't think Apple is going to want to cut themselves off from the Android side. I mean, this goes all the way back to when they had to argue with Steve Jobs about whether or not they were going to make a, a version of iTunes that worked with Windows, right? Because once they did that, suddenly you've opened up the iPod to all of those people as well. Apple now has Apple Music, both for iOS devices and the Mac, and also there's the web version, and they have an Android version as well. If this ends up generating enough money, I would imagine there would be an Android app at some point because this is going to be exclusive content that nobody else is going to be able to get. Now, conversely, maybe Apple uses it as an incentive to come over to iOS. Maybe that never moves to Android. Maybe it made more sense for them to do a music thing for Android because there was Tidal, there was Rhapsody, there was, you know, um, Google Play Music. There were all the other things that people could get over there. And so Apple might go ahead and make the music app because you weren't going to get people to come over for Apple Music because there were so many other music options. Eh, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem to me that it would be too difficult for Apple to make a podcast app for Android. You're right. Right now, they don't have it. But again, if you feel like you're missing out on an audience, it you know, uh, put the show up again for Spotify or, you know, for, for whatever other whatever other options are out there. Another point, I mean, I'm picking on that one article because they were some things that this, this gentleman, I'm sorry, I've got to go find it and try to put it in the show notes because mm -hmm. I made my notes off of it and then promptly lost the article. Right. Um, but this is something we've heard from app developers for a while, that Apple will own the relationship with your listeners or viewers, well, in this case, listeners, because they there's no indication they will be doing video. So mm. let's just leave it to listeners. Um, but that they will own the, the, the relationship, um, that you will have no direct way, because you and I both right now through Patreon, we can email our, our, our supporters mm. and have that direct relationship. This way, we really won't. Um, and I... I mean, I don't feel like I, I do that much communicating with my supporters beyond what they what they kind of expect. Not that mm -hmm. I and I probably should do more, but I, and I could do more, but now I won't have that option for anyone that is going down this this channel. Now I can advertise the like like, like the the, the daylights out of my newsletter mm -hmm. and say you know subscribe to this, subscribe to this. That's outside of the the paywall. That's right. outside of the podcast, and I can do that now. Right. So I I don't know I don't know that that's giving up a lot, but I also know in talking from to developers that's one of the biggest things they feel like they give up. Well, and and developers, I mean, it's a different thing, right? Because developers are trying to figure out how not to give Apple their thirty percent or their fifteen percent. So I mean. <laughs> Developers are making apps and we're communicating. So when you say Apple's going to own the, own the message or own the relationship, the relationship is between, you know, your voice and their ear. So I, I don't see how Apple could own that relationship. The second you open up the mic and put up your show, you're talking directly to those people. I would imagine if you wanted to be cagey about it, you could even say, you know what? It's fine that Apple is doing this, but if you really want to support me, go to Patreon. I don't think that's the best idea. I don't think that's a good way to stay on the show. But I mean, it's it's you and the microphone and the listener. So that feels like a, like a different argument. Like when Spotify said, we don't want to pay the 30%, Apple's like, well, you're going to pay the 30% if you're going to charge. And then Spotify said, okay, well, can we put up messaging that says that they could pay less <laughs> you know, over on our website? The answer is no. And I think, I think you know, Spotify has a bit of a point there. You can argue whether they are, you know, owed that or I understand, I, well, I understand Spotify being upset, I guess is the best way to put that. I don't feel like you have the same kind of problem here because what we're talking about is messaging. What we're talking about is communication. And it would surprise me if Apple was listening to every podcast and spot checking every podcast and saying, we really re would rather you didn't say that. Unless, you know, Apple was actually paying them. Like if Apple signs, you know, Joe Rogan 2 
and Joe Rogan too, you know, I mean, like if they actually pay him to produce whoever, they pay Chuck Joyner to produce a show, and then Chuck Joyner suddenly goes on and starts complaining about the way Apple does things. Well, you're actually getting paid by Apple at that point. And so I could see Apple then getting upset. Right now, you're not getting paid by Apple. You're getting paid by listeners, and Apple is taking a cut because they're facilitating that relationship. So I guess maybe technically they own the relationship, but I mean, the real, in ways that is not true with developers, the relationship between the podcaster and the listener is, I mean, is the relationship between two people, I think. I don't know if I said that right. If you didn't, I know what you mean. Okay, so. cool. Hopefully everybody else does too. <laughs> but they, again, one of the things they pointed out was that Apple, one of the things you're giving Apple is the is permission to create transcripts of your podcasts mm -hmm. and to use your podcast in machine learning um, algorithms, okay. which neither one of those I feel is a big deal. I mean, right now I upload my, obviously I do a video show on YouTube and YouTube is, is happily creating a transcript. Right. Um, that is getting better and better. It seems like with with each few months, mm -hmm. you know, they they get a little better at the machine learning, and that's created automatically. So that's one that is not going to prevent me. It doesn't bother me that they're doing that. Right. Um, and in fact, if that helps the the uh, the a or the machine learning, so much the better. Yeah, we've always thrown our stuff out there, right? I mean, do you remember how Stitcher used to? how Stitcher used to do. I don't think they do anymore, but initially Stitcher would go out, they would grab your show, they would make a copy of your show, they would then serve your show from their servers. And if you wanted to know how your show was doing on Stitcher, you had to say Stitcher at the beginning of your show and the end of your show. And then once they saw that you were giving them what they considered to be their due, then they would share with you with the numbers that they were generating from your content. And that really upset me when I first heard that. I actually talked it over with uh, Rob Walsh over at Libsyn and a couple of other people, and all of their feelings were, you know, it's your message, it's getting out there. Yeah, it's kind of a drag that they do it that way, but, you know, mention it and get the numbers or don't and don't. Either way, you know, it's, it's fine was sort of their thinking. So, I mean, the, by virtue of the fact that we've always kind of put our stuff out there, I mean, the fact that we're in the uh, Apple podcast, I would assume that they could go ahead and be doing that now anyway, right? Because we're just we're just throwing our stuff out to the public. They could be picked up and used by anybody, I would think. Hopefully, you don't get something like what Stitcher was doing a long time ago. And I don't believe this is how they do it anymore. But what they were doing a long time ago, when they were taking your stuff, making a copy of it, serving it themselves, and then saying, oh, you'd like to know? Well, then now I need you to do a favor for me. Funny story. I thought I did when you were just taking my content and using it. Um, so it feels like that's been a thing that's always been out there anyway. It's just Apple is sort of saying, by the way, we can do this. I don't I don't know. What do you, Am I misreading that or what's your thought on it? No, no, I, th I think you're absolutely right. And to be honest with you, I hadn't thought about it exactly that way. I guess it's one of those things they the, the lawyers make them put in there to make sure that they have reserved the right to use it as 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 they see fit. I mean, right now, if I download your podcast and decide I'm going to feed it, feed it into this other Macintosh over here to start mm -hmm. doing machine learning, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you've you've implicitly given me permission, um, and I think we've both given Apple that permission already. But yeah. just to be sure, and since it is going to be behind a paywall, when there's money involved, <laughs> that yeah. Apple wants to be sure that you know they don't, they aren't on the wrong end of a suit. Right. I'd forgotten that about Stitcher, and I think that's one reason that I ended up because I, I I did not would not do that under the back then because the theory in my mind was if Stitcher does it and then you know Service X, Service Y, and Service Z also require mentions. I'm going to spend half my time reciting, you know, you can find me on Stitcher, you can find me here, you can find me there. And yeah. that just detracts from the show. It's funny. One of the, um, I don't actually mention anybody where you can get my podcast now because Ghana, which is, uh, which is uh, the outfit out of India, they, they largely serve India as far as podcasts. Um, if you mention anybody, you have to mention Ghana. 
And so I'm like, yeah, okay, that's fine. I'll just say wherever you get podcasts <laughs> because I don't want to end up, like you say, I don't want to end up with like nine, you know, except for the ones I make up, like when I do the whole side cast, overcast, undercast, round cast, all those things. Yeah, and, and I, I don't mind saying that my podcast app of choice right now is overcast. And is so, it really? yeah, uh, I've, right. I've, I like it for the, 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 um, the speed controls, mm -hmm. which I think their algorithms are the best out there. Yes. And so it, I, I know you're not a fan of listening or having your show listened to at high speed. Uh, um, Overcast is the one that I'm okay with it with because you can almost not tell. I mean, depending on how fast you do it. I mean, he does an amazing job with, with making that sound okay. I'd still rather not. Uh, and that's true both from when I was doing, uh, you know, Mission Log and Mac OS Can and whatever else, uh, only because we're a long way from Don and Drew, right? And and that's not to knock them, except they used to do like two, two and a half hour shows. And it was, you know, not tailored necessarily. Um, everything that I've ever done, except for when I'm having a conversation show like this with you or like, you know, in a few minutes. Mac OS can mission log, all the other stuff that I've done, uh, was, was always very tailored. And so, um, it was about how long I thought it needed to be. <laughs> and so for somebody to come along and go, yeah, but what if we make it faster? You know, it's sort of like, yeah, I want to listen to the wall, but I don't have an hour and a half. Could I listen to the wall in 45 minutes? <laughs> you know, I don't think it would sound quite as, quite as good. Rapper's Delight's a fun song, but I need it to be three minutes, not, you know, 14. So just, if we just <laughs> pick that up a tiny bit, that'd be great. That's, it's but that's, you bring that's that up. the, that's the, you know, prima donna in me. I'm sorry. It's not like I think, eh, whatever. Anyway, funny I bring that up. I apologize. No, no, no. It's, it's funny you bring that up because I was thinking about that today and in preparation for this. And I think that for me, there are shows I listen to for the performance of mm -hmm. the show as opposed to the information. There's some shows I just listen to. The performance is fine, but there really is no performance. It's just people doing their thing. And I'm there for the information. Mm -hmm. And so I will suck those down as fast as I can get them. Um, but the performance shows, yes, for the timing and, the, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Butler's Rock and Roll Geek Show, well... I, you know, I'd love to compress that a little bit, but because he drops music in, I it, it becomes gibberish. So right. you know, I have to listen to that at normal speed. Uh, that's that's the best example I can think of. Yeah. Um, so it it kind of depends on the individual and what they're doing and how they're doing it, as to whether that's a good idea. I I, I want to go back to something you started with though, uh, and we and we I don't know if this is accurate. You said you didn't, but. If Apple would allow someone to support you at the level of 50 cents a show, mm -hmm. I mean, that appeals to me a lot because I I feel like one of the places the Internet has let us down was the promise of those micropayments um, that, you know, because asking somebody to commit five, ten bucks a month, that's a pretty healthy commitment. Even a mm -hmm. buck a month is a pretty healthy commitment, yeah. or a buck a week, I should say. A, 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 but even a buck a month, um, if you have a wide variety of podcasts you enjoy. The idea of that micropayment thing, I think, would allow pe more people to say, hey, I really enjoyed that show, click. Um, or, you know, I've really been enjoying this show, click, and mm -hmm. I'll just make it a regular thing. You with that or not? I, well, I mean, I like the fact that they're letting people set their own prices. I mean, that's pretty cool. I wonder, again, once we get more into it, is it only going to be monthly or can you do the thing that I know Patreon in the past couple of months uh, set up an annual thing where you could, you know, you can charge, you know, however much you charge per month or you can do a reduced rate for the full year. Um, yeah, I like the idea of the 50 cent thing, honestly, because... I mean, it's, it, it becomes a question of numbers at that point, right? 
one of the biggest things has always been like, like, I don't think you could do Patreon for 50 cents because the amount that Patreon takes by the time you, by the time you did that, it would be tiny. I don't even know that they offer anything that small. I think the lowest you can go is a dollar. And I don't think a dollar is going to break anybody. The biggest problem, again, with Patreon is the, you know, having to send somebody outside to, to put in their information. 50 cents would seem like a ridiculous thing to do or a dollar. 50 cents or a dollar per month would be feel like a ridiculous thing to do, except for the except for the thing where it's right there in your hand, except for the thing where you do have the subscribe button just right there. How many times have you... Amazon's one click is great for this and awful as well. I have a Kindle. I've got so many books that I bought for $2.99 or a ninety-nine that I don't even know if I'm going to get to them, but they're a buck ninety-nine and it's one click, you know, and I can afford for it for like a dollar ninety-nine when it's normally 10 bucks or 15 bucks or whatever. And it's just right there. It's just like, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just press one button. That's it. And, uh, and you quote own end quote that thing. Um, the 50 cent idea is interesting because getting people to spend 50 cents is probably easier than getting people to spend 99 cents. And 99 cents was the sweet spot for, for music, I mean, for music downloads. That buck 29 is where it started to become a question of like, oh, is it really worth that? Because anything's worth less than a dollar. Even if it's only one penny <laughs> less than a dollar, anything's worth less than a dollar. When you go over a buck, then it's like, oh, I don't know if that's any, I don't know if that's anything I want to do or not. So, I mean, that's the, that's the potential magic of the whole thing. It, it, anything else before has always felt like it would be ridiculous to try to charge as little as 50 cents because, well, I'm paying for hosting and that's 20 bucks a month and I'm, you know, I've got to do this thing and I got to do this and all these things. Apple has already said, right, 20 bucks a year and you can charge like this much. So if you can get... If if you're charging ten dollars, you have to get ten people. If you're charging one dollar, you I can't. I had the math in my head, and then suddenly it all went away. Basically, I think it would be easier to get fifty people at fifty cents than it would be to get uh, you know five people at ten dollars. I don't know if that makes sense, but I mean the, the fact that it's so small that it's such a small amount. Theoretically, you can get a lot more people to you know to click that button, and even though you're not charging much, you're theoretically making it in volume, I guess. No, I, I agree with you. And that's that's kind of where I'm coming from. Can I can um, I ask you a question? Sure. Are you thinking of doing this? <laughs> I'm thinking of... <laughs> I, well, yes, of course. I, I'm right. thinking of doing this. I, yeah. I do have the question. First of all, I see no reason not to mm -hmm. at the moment. I right. see no reason not to for the people who would like to use that platform right. and want to support Mac voices. So you're, you're I, so the way you're thinking about it would be the same show. Just, I will give people a way to pay for it if they want to, or they can just keep listening to it for free. Exactly. So okay. you could support me through the Apple podcast subscription or Patreon or something else. Okay. Is because I, I, I feel like I've made a bit of a commitment to my, my audience long ago that you know, I wasn't going to do anything the main Mac Voices show would not be behind a, be behind a paywall. Right. Now, right now, Mac Voices After Dark is a Patreon-only benefit. Right. So it's not exactly behind a paywall, but it's a benefit. Well, it's a different um, thing, though, because it's a different show. I mean, anybody who... Yeah. And this is sort of the, like one of the things that I've gotten stuck on. I had somebody, um, I had somebody uh, post on Twitter, uh, don't even think about it they said, which I thought was really rude, honestly. And I don't mind saying that. I thought that was a really rude way to do it because you know what? I'm going to think about it and you can't <laughs> stop me. Here's the thing though. Like you, I made, I've made deals with people all the way along. You know, my free shows are free. And I think I stated that for Mac OS can a million years ago that I wasn't going to take it behind the paywall. Everything else though, if, if I start free, it feels like it would be rude to take it, you know, back behind the paywall. That said... I have no problem thinking about a different show that would live there because that is a whole different thing with which you can play. And I don't know that I'm going to do it. Honestly, I have no idea. I know I was inordinately excited when they announced it only because it finally puts this on par. It, it, it's, it is, 
And who knows why they didn't do it 10 years ago? Who knows if it if it took Serial, if it took NPR, if it took Wondery, if it took all of those things for Apple, I think that there was money there. It's kind of weird, though, because from the people who brought you the Fart app, right, from the people who brought you the way to pay for an app for flatulence or to download free apps for flatulence, it still took them 10 years to say maybe people would be interested in supporting people who actually, you know, are saying something, which is kind of odd. But I, you know, the reason I asked you if you were thinking about doing it was because I, you answered my question. You're So you're not thinking of creating something new for it. You're just thinking this would be another way that people might be able to support me should they choose to. That would be my first venture into okay. it. Whether I All would right. create something supplemental or additional, that's that's not impossible. Right. Um, I, I would, you know, and I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because that's something that I, I had in mind to talk to you about. Um, you know, you're a guy who Mac OS Ken has been a bedrock. Mm -hmm. But along the way, you've done a number of different shows. You've tried them. Right. Um, they either weren't doing what you wanted or you decided, okay, it's time to do something new. Right. And and I've always admired that because you have no problem saying, hey, this, I've done that. Now I'm going to go do something else. I want to try something else. Oh, I have and a so, tremendous problem doing it. But oh, really? I, I've, I've learned to deal. Yeah. I mean, it okay. always feels bad, you know, because every because there's a certain amount, I mean... Every show that I've done is something that I've enjoyed doing. And there's also always a hope that those things are going to be, you know, a thing that's going to be able to sustain or to self-sustain. Um, I hope that I am now to a point where I can say, this isn't working and I can't see how it's going to. And so then I can make the tough decision of stopping. Um to be 100% honest, I don't know that in a few minutes is ever going to pay anything. I've had a couple of sponsors, but there's just weirdness around that show. I think a large part of it is that, you know, all of my vanity URLs for all of my advertisers end with slash Mac OS Ken. And people, when they, you know, buy a show, want to know how that particular show is performing. And so I can't just be slash Mac OS Ken for all the shows I do. They want to know how that one's doing versus how that one's doing, because then they want to know if they should throw more money at one or the other or whatever. That said, I, I love in a few minutes, I love getting together and talking over five different topics over the course of a week with you, with Adam, with Allison Sheridan, with, you know, anybody else that I can, uh, that I can get on, that I can bring in. Um, it's, you know, so it's not just a question of, is it going to pay money? It's a question of, is it doing what I want it to do on a number of levels? Um, and yeah, coming to the decision, I mean, I only did the live show recently. I did Mac OS Ken live for about six months and it was incredibly difficult to decide not to do it because you were turning up a lot of days and, and, you know, John and Frank and, um, and Donna, you know, Donna, <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of other people, you know, were turning up every day for that. And and it was wonderful to be a part of that. But at the same time, it was like it, you know, it was it was becoming it it was demanding more than uh, unfortunately it was it was able to return for me um, just on a personal level, because originally it was going to be, yeah, I'll just open the microphone and talk for five minutes. And because it's me, it ended up becoming a I'm preparing for two and a half hours for a half hour. And, you know, it, that that just unfortunately was not sustainable. Didn't mean to go off on a rant there. It's just, I, you know, when you're like, oh, yeah, you can just do that. It, it's 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 still tough. It's still tough to do um, to 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 say goodbye to something because, you know, I'm not just I'm not just creating stuff. I'm not just creating stuff to sell. I'm creating stuff that I love and hoping that it'll that it'll make it, I guess. And see, that to me is the difference in between a content creator and a true podcaster. Because when you got into podcasting, you did it because you loved it. Um, did, did you hope it paid? Yes, absolutely. Oh, yes. Of course. Yeah. You know, but the, most of the people that do podcasts and that have continued with it have a love of it, mm -hmm. uh, of, the, of the subject and, and the process too, I think. Yeah. Um, because 
you know, I mean, look, let's face it. And, and I know we, every, every once in a while we'll let this dirty little secret out. It's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, forget the monetary part, which somebody may say part of this discussion is a bit crass because we've been talking about money. But at the end of the day, just – well, you just said it about uh, the live show that, you know, you were preparing for two and a half hours for, what, a, a 20 to 30-minute show. Yeah. Yeah. It, and And I am sorry that if people find it crass, I mean – it's what I do for a living. This is what I do for a living. I do, I mean, I have support from Patreon. I have advertisers for Mac OS Ken. Uh, and then I produce a show for the guys over at Secure Mac called The Checklist. Uh, when I did Mission Log, I was hired by Roddenberry Entertainment to help produce that show and to co-host that show. Um, and it's kind of funny because, you know, yeah, I love it, but I I am in the I'm in the position of being able to do what I love for a living. And so then when we're talking about the business side of it, yeah, we're talking business. If you want to talk about love of podcasting, I'm curious if you do this too because it was something that Adam said on in a few minutes this week. Uh, we were talking about this topic as well, and I said, uh, "So are you thinking of trying it?" And he said, "Well, of course I'm thinking about it. I'm a podcaster." And it it hadn't even occurred to me to do that, but like yeah, I do that all the time. Like, oh, this would make a great podcast. Then you step back for a second and go, and that wouldn't. But I mean, as as somebody who does this, I'm, and I'm assuming you do this too, as somebody who does this, you're you're always thinking, oh, that would make a great show. And then hopefully, you know, you stop yourself. <laughs> <laughs> because I think some would be a great show a lot more than it is. But yeah, I mean, it's not... If it feels crass that we're only talking about the business side, that's because Apple has made a business move that is making podcasting more of a business in a lot of ways. Uh, if you want to talk about the love of podcasting, uh, you know, I could do that all day long, too. But yeah. it'd probably be a different day because we're talking business. And and I think that's a great way to look at it is that that, that this is a business discussion and how mm -hmm. is how is Apple's decision going to affect the business of what we do, and I you heard the intro I gave you know how our listeners, um, what effect that will have on them going mm -hmm. forward. And I think right now for for the two of us, it probably won't have much effect for them for what we do right now. What we what right. else we might do, may change it a little. Yeah, hopefully it's not going to have any effect on the listeners at all, because hopefully nobody is going to take their show behind a paywall. I mean, honestly, I really hope that. I mean, I hope that if they see money on the other side of whatever that is, that they'll find a way to differentiate that. Because I would, like, I just personally would hate to, I'd hate to do that to somebody. Because you know what? You and I sit here and say 50 cents is nothing. There are literally, honestly, truly people for whom 50 cents is not nothing, right? And I would never want, you know, my desire for them to be one of a thousand people that gives me 50 cents a month or 10,000 people that gives me 50 cents a month. I would never want my desire for their 50 cents to block them from, you know, something that they're hopefully enjoying or, or gaining value from. So hopefully this doesn't affect anybody as it stands right now. What I personally would rather see is that people, you know, uh, find something else to offer and get support from people who can afford to support it or who want to without boxing out anybody who either can't or, you know, doesn't want to for whatever reason. There's a word we haven't used yet in this conversation that mm -hmm. I, I, will, I will occasionally bring up to my audience, both in the newsletter and in my monthly updates. And, and I think you do it. And I think I'd like to think I do it. I certainly try to. And that is I want to earn the listeners and viewers support. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to, to, to do it as I don't want to say a charity thing, but, you know, or a contribution thing. I, I, I want them to feel like, hey, he he earned it. You know, mm -hmm. he, he he really goes out of his way or he delivers consistent content that I can use. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to say quality. I'm just going to say consistent, okay. um, you know, but, and I think you do the same. I feel like you earn your support because of the consistency and the quality of what you do. And there are a bunch of other sh shows and I'm going to avoid calling out anybody else because then we'll be here all night calling out, you know, the people that earn it. Right. Um, but, I, but I think earn is something that folks need to understand that that's what we strive to do. I, you know, I, I hope so. 
Um, I have a very hard time thinking about it and talking about it, honestly, <laughs> because I, the way I started doing Patreon was because I had a time where there were absolutely no ads and I was probably about a month and a half uh, from, you know, I don't know why ads dried up, but for a while they did and I sailed into trouble. And, you know, and I had to be very forthright and say, I am not sure what happens month after next. And so if you can, and if you want to, please do. And, uh, and people were there and that was amazing. And I assume that that is because of the relationship that I have with them. Um, it always feels weird and icky and I, you know, I'd rather live in a society where Every morning you go outside and the goose has laid another golden egg for you, you know, and you just take that and go down the street and, you know, turn it in for, you know, bread and whatever else and uh, and then keep doing what you're doing. So it makes me uncomfortable when you say that. I don't know if you can tell. I'm not looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, just, I'm, you know, I just, I just, you know, same as you, I'm, I'm out there doing something that I love and hoping that it has value for people and trying to bring that trying to bring that to people every day. And, you know, that's, that's, that's it. I agree with you completely that it's not comfortable to talk about um, because I'm not comfortable talking about it. And I don't think that I could have this conversation with just anyone on the other side of, of this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think it's something that, you know, that's what, that's the way I would like my listeners to, to view me. If they mm -hmm. decide to to help support me, um, and that's the way I look at you know the people that I support on Patreon or through who you know wherever I support them, yeah. that you know they uh, they earn it because they show up, they deliver. I enjoy the content, I get something out of it, yeah. um, and then there sh there there shows that with all due respect, I mean I kind of give a. I give a glancing listen to, and once in a while they come up with an episode that sounds interesting. But for the most part, they're just sort of there, mm -hmm. and you know. So I, it it all depends, I guess, on how you do it. But yeah, it's not a comfortable topic, and yet it's one that right now we almost have to have because of the Apple situation. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, although, well, yes, yes, I I, I was going to try to say something else, and I lost it. I apologize. I, I don't really do a lot of talking, Chuck. <laughs> I, I did want to go back. I'm curious, though, because wasn't the original uh, Mac OS Ken live um, the call-in show? Or was mm -hmm. that – did that have, that have another title? No, that was that. It was, That's what yes, I thought. It was a call-in yeah. show. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was. Yeah, at a time when you couldn't do some of the things you can do now with the technology. Well, except I actually couldn't do that show now. Honestly, because it was set up on Skype, and when Microsoft bought Skype, they killed the call forwarding thing. Because I made it so that you didn't have to have Skype, you didn't have to have anything. As long as you had a phone, you could call in. And then uh, George Starcher, who used to run the run the board for me, uh, would uh, would uh, take the calls and he would forward them over to my other Skype. But then they stopped the forwarding feature, which George did not find out until he was in the middle of running somebody else's call in show. He just made the change one day. And then, so that night, he's like trying to forward them. I was like, oh, no, you can't do that anymore. So, yeah, that was the same kind of thing, honestly. I, I, I started that one, you know, with the expectation that eventually it would attract advertisers. And also, it was like it, I was taking three hours to produce the one-hour show. And then people would call in and just talk about whatever, whatever they wanted to talk about anyway. And so, after a while, I was like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take my Wednesday night back. I think. But again, that was also a difficult thing to do. I felt, you know, really bad. And yeah. Yeah. Memories. Yeah. <laughs> Good memories. Good yeah, memories. Mostly. Uh, with, you know, when, but when things come to an end, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I wanted to have this conversation with, with someone else who is, is sort of has at least some of the same philosophies that I do. Um, and I've, I've just, I respect what as everyone knows. I respect what you do so much. And I was anxious to see what your reactions were to this. And I know again, because we were having this Slack conversation that, you know, yeah, this is something we should probably talk about and give people a look behind the curtain to see what we're at least thinking. And, 
I'd love to say that I'd like to announce that this is what I'm going to do. I have no idea because I've got to wait and see what what the terms are. Right. Yeah. I, I think I told you uh, when we were speaking privately, there's been this one show that I've had in my head for like a year and a half. that I thought that would be really fun to do if I had the time. And it would also be really fun to do if I knew it was going to yield anything. And, you know, now Apple has provided this thing. And I, you know, I figured I would be like now going, and so I'm going to do this. I got no idea. I'm probably, I'm, I may not do it. The one thing that would encourage people to, well, whatever. Lots of people seem really upset and hopefully, and this goes to the relationship that you and I were talking about. Hopefully the podcaster with you, with, with whom you have the relationship is not going to screw you on this. Hopefully they are not going to take the thing that you love and say, now, if you want it, it's going to cost you money from now on. I hope that that is the case. Now, they may decide to do an ad-free version behind the paywall. And you may think, well, that stinks because I don't want to listen to ads, but I don't want to pay money. Okay, well, I mean, they're giving you an either or at that point. That, I'm hoping, is the worst thing that happens. That somebody may offer something that you feel like might be a tiny bit more convenient behind the paywall. But I'm really hoping that nobody, you know, suddenly goes off. Like if I was a Joe Rogan listener, I would be upset that Joe Rogan is now that the only way I can get the most recent stuff is to switch to a different platform and, you know, start paying that platform for that stuff. Honestly, I know people who followed Howard Stern to Sirius XM or Sirius or whichever one it was at the time. Uh, I didn't. And I wasn't a huge Howard Stern listener, but I can imagine being upset by that. If all of a sudden the only way I can get you after, you know, you've, you've turned me into this fan for 15 years, 10, 15 years, whatever, you know, I bought all the Snapple, I you know, did all the other <laughs> stuff that you talked about. But now if I want to listen to you, I have to I have to start paying somebody else 20 bucks a month or however much it was. Hopefully that's not what happens. And, and I would encourage listeners to, I mean, first of all, wait and see what happens. Uh, but then also, you know, understand that, a, you know, a lot of people have never gotten a dime for this. And if they suddenly find, you know, that there might be a way for them to get a dime for it, um, at the very least, don't be mad that they're thinking about it. Because while, you know, while talking about business and while talking about money on something like podcasting may feel crass, um, there's also something crass about expecting people to do, you know, something uh, for absolutely no return, especially if this is the first time that they have seen the possibility. I was thinking about like, there there are probably shows out there with 500 people or less, 500 downloads or less per episode. Those shows are going to have the most difficult time attracting any kind of advertiser. But that doesn't mean that those 500 people or those 500 downloads don't want to support in some way. And this is something that Apple has opened up now. Maybe for whatever reason they didn't do Patreon or whatever. This is something that's opened up again. It feels to me like it is not just automatically a good thing, but it doesn't feel like it's automatically the bad thing that a lot of people assume it is either. Here, here's the one thing I will say. Um, why is it that an app that makes less than a million dollars only has to pay 15%, but a podcast that makes less than a million dollars, and I would imagine that's all of them, uh, you know, still pays the 30. But, you know, whatever. Again, it's it's all additive. It's something that wasn't available to us a few days ago. So, I don't know. It, it, it doesn't seem like it's... Uh, it seems like it could be a good thing for a lot of people. It's funny to hear you put it that way because, again, I was thinking about this that... Because I know that I've, I've listened to shows that went away because the host couldn't afford to keep it yeah. going. Yeah. And so given the chance for the sh for a show like that to continue behind the paywall in the hopes that the podcaster will get enough money to keep it going, I would prefer to see that that hmm. move over. I, I think you started that out with the relationship quest comment, and I think that's what it comes down to, you know, is what has that podcaster represented to you? And look, yeah. if the podcaster comes up and says, hey, you know what? This show is costing me, you know, 
a not insignificant amount of money a month to uh, to produce. Yeah. And I'm going to take it over there behind that paywall and see if I can keep it going because otherwise it's probably going to go away. I'd have a hard time being upset with that. That's really interesting. I think I would still, well, only because I know me, what I would personally do is try to figure out if there's a way I can squeeze out another show and say exactly why. I would advertise the show that's going behind the paywall on the show that's free and say, well, because this is what I did with Day 6 a million years ago. The reason I started Day 6, and I still remember talking about it for the first time on on uh, Mac OS X, I was just like, look, it, it this this takes time and I want to keep doing it, but I don't see how I can. So here's this thing that I'm going to try. And if enough people come along, then that will make this an easier thing to do. And it's not holding a gun to somebody's head. It wasn't extortion because the whole time what I was saying was, I want to keep doing this. I need to find a way to support doing this. So I'm going to do this little bit more over here that hopefully is going to be enough to support this. And it was enough to drive me through at the time. That's what I would hope somebody would do. But yeah, you know, I'm thinking about um, your Mac life went away six months ago. I wish this had been here for Sean, uh, you know, five years ago. Because I don't know that, you know, starting it tomorrow would have been enough to be able for him to keep the show going. But starting it a few years ago and, you know, having it be supplemented and supported and then being able to continue from there, that might have been a better thing for him. And who knows how many other podcasts that have you know, just stopped somewhere along the way because people just couldn't, you know, couldn't keep doing it without seeing any sort of, you know, return at all. And return isn't always financial either. Obviously, there's the interaction with the audience and things like that. Sometimes they can be wildly quiet, though. And so you might think yeah, nobody cares. You might think there is no return. And then, you know, you stop the show and people miss it. But for some reason, there's not that communication, too. I don't know. I feel like I'm babbling. This has actually been, this has been playing in my head like you know, pretty consistently for the past week and trying to figure out, am I excited about it because it's Apple? Am I excited about it because it's giving tools to podcasters? Am I excited about it personally at all? Does it matter to me personally? Um, I think a lot of it for me just really does come back to, it's almost like validation. If Apple had gone into subscription podcasts by, you know, hiring five big stars and saying, these are the five shows and you pay us 10 bucks a month or it's part of, you know, uh, Apple one or something like that. I, that would have been um, disappointing and insulting. And honestly, there's something validating about the fact that Apple is like, all right, you think you can make money? Cool. We're going to make it a little bit easier for you. We're going to take the same cut that we always take. But, you know, let's see what we can do. It feels like they've, they've given people tools now to try something new that the only complaint that I have is I wish they had done it 10 years ago. And at that point, podcasting, I mean, 10 years is a long time, but it's also no time. Right. Uh, and I'm not sure that, I mean, th think, think 10 years back. You know, streaming, streaming was not a big thing. Downloading was just kind of getting, getting there. Um, and so I'm not sure that everyone that, that a more mainstream market was ready for the idea of receiving their entertainment. The tech audience, absolutely. I mean, the tech audience got it right away, but the mainstream folks, not so sure they were quite ready for it. So maybe that's why it, it has taken this long. Uh, hmm. But I'm with you. I think when you ask me on in a few minutes about it, it's like, yeah, anything that, that puts podcast in the spotlight, podcasts in the spotlight is a good thing um, as, as long as it has nothing to do with, you know, something really tawdry or illegal or anything like that. Yeah. But you know, as the long rest as that of story is, doesn't end with before turning the gun on himself, then, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think this is a good thing. It's going to be interesting to see where it takes us um, and how we all adapt to it. You know, because I, I keep saying I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't because I, I don't know what I will be allowed to do under the terms of Spotify or Apple or anywhere else. Um, so, yeah, it's it's an ongoing story. It'll be fun to see what happens, though. I think so. 
before you get out of here, I want to make sure, though, that you do promote everything that you do because you can be found a lot of places. You do produce a lot of content now that is out there just running around that anybody can listen to. Willy-nilly, higgledy-piggledy. Yeah. Um, I do produce a show for the guys over at Secure Market. It's called The Checklist. It's sort of a conversational um, security show. Not, I mean, we're not going to teach you a proper configuration for your, you know, cloud deployment. Uh, we will talk about, you know, things like password security and the latest, uh, latest big hacks and, you know, stuff like that. And uh, you can find that at uh, securemac.com slash checklist or wherever you get podcasts. Uh, in a few minutes is a daily show, Monday through Friday. Spend about 10 minutes talking over a tech topic with uh, various friends. Chuck is a, is a, is a regular uh, returning guest. Adam Christensen, Peter Cohen, um, Allison Sheridan, Shelley Brisbane, uh, other people whose names escape me right now. It's it's sort of a rotating thing. Um, and that is available wherever you get podcasts as well in a few minutes. And then Mac OS Canada is, uh, is, is the one that started it all for me. And that's available uh, wherever you get podcasts. Find it and follow it. Because you can't subscribe unless you're on something besides Apple Podcasts, in which case subscribe. Just go and get it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thank you. Whatever, whatever you call it, go and get it. Mm -hmm. Ken, thanks. It's it's always a blast. Um, I appreciate your thoughts on this. I I've, I feel like this was a bit of a soul cleansing, maybe at least for me. I, may, I hope for both of us. Um, so we'll see where it goes. But thanks, thanks for uh, thanks for having me, Chuck. I appreciate it. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. I started out by saying this is inside baseball. It really is inside baseball, but it is something you're going to want to pay attention to. Um, maybe not for Ken's show or my show, but for other people's shows. See what decisions they make. See what positions they take. Um, and if you have thoughts on anything we've said here, um, I'd love to know what they are. Chuck at MacVoices.com, because this is an evolving conversation. There's no question about it. Until the next time, and as always... Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.